Hi, my name is Nadgur Drast, and Tamiza invited me here to talk about data science interviews. And this is what I'm going to do. And I will describe what they look like, and I will try to give some advice how to approach them. And there are many aspects uh, to, to interviewing that one could talk about. Uh, how to dress, how to act, uh, how to answer the what is your greatness, greatest weakness question. And I will talk about none of that. This has been uh, done already by, by better people. And besides, all the advice that people give about any kind of job interview, tech interviews in particular, also applies to data science interviews. And I will only talk about the bits specific to data science, the, the technical questions, or what passes for technical questions in an interview. Okay, so who am I and what makes me think I'm qualified to advise other people on data science interview? The answer is uh, I, I don't think I'm qualified. I'm, I'm not qualified to, to do that, but I just do it. And, and this applies uh, more, more broadly to all my doing of data science. And uh, if there is one thing you, you remember from this talk, let it be this one. Just do it. No one in data science is really qualified to, to do data science. And people simply do it. If you, if you start doing data science, you doing do it for long enough, people will start calling you a data scientist. This is, this is how it works. So, uh, this is who I am. I, uh, I, I'm a failed physicist. Uh, from, I, I, I started my PhD in the uh, Polish Academy of Sciences. And uh, in 2012, I abandoned my, my dreams of solving quantum gravity, and I started working as a web developer slash video game designer. Then I started doing some Java in uh, finance. Then I discovered uh, machine learning. and. Uh, I and, and gravitated towards machine learning, and at some point uh, in this path, I started calling myself a data scientist, and this is uh, this is what I put on my resume now. And uh, bottom line is, I have interviewed a lot, and perhaps even more than, than just this picture suggests, because when I start uh, looking for a new job, I just apply everywhere. And one more thing uh, to know about me is that I, I like to be prepared. I, I think of myself as a supervised learning algorithm. Just give me 500 uh, labeled examples, and I will I will fit to the pattern, whether I understand it or not. So uh, before going to any interviews, I, I read every book on data science interviews I could find, and uh, I, I found all the questions on Glassdoor and elsewhere on the internet I could find. And this, uh, this talk will be based mostly on yes, my, my own experience in, uh, in data science interviews, as well as, as all the stuff that uh, I found on the internet, which uh, should be pretty up to date, because I, my, my, my survey, uh, my, my last survey of the, of the field was from uh, just couple months ago. Okay, so uh, here are the, the, the books, and uh, if you want to read uh, just one book on data science interviews, I recommend this one, Data Science Interviews Exposed, because I think it's, uh, it has its flaws, but it's, uh, it's the most complete out of the bunch. Uh, these two are, I think, rather weak. They have pretty incomprehensible explanations, but, but they have uh, a good survey of advanced topics, especially in machine learning and, uh, and code snippets, which is always appreciated. This one, 120 data science interview questions, this has some really good deep questions. It would be pretty good, uh, except it's, it's literally what it says. It's 120 uh, interview questions, no answers. Also, uh, I recommend my blog. There's a there's a section on interviews. Uh, I every time I, I get a new new question from an interview, I put it there, and there's also 
uh, some answers to the to the more more interesting ones. Okay. Uh, without further ado, let's enough with the introduction. Let's let's start. Do you know who this person is? This is Ronald Fisher. This is the man who almost single-handedly invented modern statistics. And this one, this is easy. This is, of course, Alan Turing, the partner of computer science and artificial intelligence, the man who, who broke German Enigma cipher. So, the question is, which one do you think would make a better data scientist? Think about it. Neither of them, yes. Because, uh, I mean, they were both brilliant, but neither of them would even get the job because neither of them knew the first thing about Hadoop, random forest, or relational databases. So, what is my point in this? My point is, data science interviewing is a, is a skill. It's a specific skill that you need to deliberately practice and it's, n it's not enough that you, you're, the, you're a genius in statistics or computer science or even both. You need to prepare. It's, it's a skill like playing the piano or playing chess is a skill. Just because you're brilliant, you, you shouldn't expect that you will do well on your first try if you have, if you have never practiced. And of course, uh, and I, I, by this I mean, it says data science interviewing is a skill, and it's, a, it's a, even a skill that is distinct from data science itself. One could, of course, try to get good at data science and hope that it will translate into being good at data science interviews, but I think this is uh, unnecessarily convoluted and inefficient way to do it. Just go for data science interviewing itself. Okay, the good news is, this is not hard. And if you're listening to this talk, then it means that you have probably put more effort into, into data science interview preparation than, than, than most candidates. I have seen uh, data science, I have, I have run some data science interviews myself, and I have seen candidates um, really bright people with PhDs with in even very relevant fields like statistics or artificial intelligence, I have seen them flank interviews because they didn't know some very basic facts. And, and of, of course Alan Turing would also flank the interview because you, you, you really need to prepare and um, it's comparatively very little effort to, to, to prepare for a data science interview compared to learning data science itself, and it doesn't make any sense not to do it. So, essentially all you need to know about uh, machine learning, statistics, computer science, you can, you can find in these three, three books. It's Bishop, it's Coleman, the uh, famous uh, big books uh, about machine learning, computer science, statistics, and everything you need to know is in there. But actually, what you really, really need to know is, is, is this small fraction uh, at the bottom. The worst thing you can do when preparing for, a, for an interview is open Bishop's book and get stuck at chapter three and just give up and uh, go back to playing video games. So, uh, as wrong as this sounds, I, I recommend to, for you to study for the test instead of trying to learn machine learning in general or learn as much about statistics as you can. I recommend just to study the, the stuff that you are likely to be asked in an interview. And I also recommend to go for, for the breadth of knowledge, not, not for the depth. Because data science interviews uh, are quite famous for, um, for requiring very broad knowledge, but therefore they cannot and are not, cannot be and, and are not very deep. So if you have just very shallow but broad knowledge of all these things, you, you are likely to do well. And 
much better than a person who has a PhD in statistics but never bothered to, to learn good programming or, or, or vice versa. Okay, so uh, let's, let's do it. Let's see what kinds of questions uh, you will be asked in data science interview. I, I had the revolutionary idea to actually use data to answer this question. So I have, uh, I have gathered, I, I have um, browsed all the Glassdoor and other sites with uh, data science interview questions from, from, from real interviews. And I have made, I have made a little uh, plot with a breakdown of questions into five categories. There's machine learning and natural language processing, probability and statistics, data science, generic data science questions and business uh, awareness questions, technology and computer science, this includes questions about specific technologies, and finally math and brain theaters. Uh, this is this is a uh, result of 200 uh, of uh, me labeling, hand labeling 200 questions, the top 200 questions that I found. And I looked at this graph and immediately, uh, what I immediately thought is this is wrong. This, this doesn't resemble in any way what I have experienced, uh, not in an interview and certainly not on the job. So like uh, any good data scientist, I will now uh, go on to ignore the data I got. It. But uh, this requires an explanation. So. Uh, what do I mean uh, by saying that this doesn't resemble my experience? Machine learning and probability and statistics in this breakdown they they account for more than sixty percent of questions, and and computer science and technology is is meager, looks like an eight percent. So and this is this is completely backwards uh, with respect to what I have experienced. And I think the, the explanation is that I have interviewed mostly in London in, uh, with London startups and some, uh, some old school companies. And the people uh, posting these questions on the internet, I, I get the impression that they are mostly interviewing with tech giants in, uh, in Silicon Valley. So, so why does it make a difference? It makes a difference because because what you are asked about mostly depends, not, not even on the position you're interviewing for, it depends on who you're interviewing with. So in a small startup, you are likely to be interviewing for the position, for the very first data science position, and there might not be anyone with any real actual data scientist in there, so you, you will be interviewed by managers or engineers or other, other people who are not data scientists, so, um, and naturally, they, they will ask different kinds of questions. So, the, the prevalence of machine learning uh, and probability and statistics in, in this graph, actually, I, it certainly doesn't, uh, doesn't reflect what actually is done in, uh, on, a, on the job by, by data scientists. But I think what it reflects is wishful thinking on part of, of data scientists. These things are what data scientists think they're supposed to do, so they love to ask people those questions, and I'm, I'm no exception. If these are the things that I like to talk about, so these are the questions that I would like to ask people, but these are not the questions that you will be asked in, a, in an interview where, where you're interviewing with, a, with an engineer. So, Machine learning, natural language processing, probability and statistics, these are the things that data scientists ask. So in a, in a big tech company with, a, with an already strong data science department, yes, perhaps these would be the, the most typical questions, but if you're interviewing with uh, anything other, if you're interviewing with Facebook or Google, if you're interviewing with a, with a small startup, you're very likely to be talking to engineers and engineers will, will be asking you tech questions and computer science questions. And uh, almost uh, big or small company will almost always at some point interview 
with, a, with some kind of manager who's, who may not be a technical person. But, so they will, a, a manager will typically ask either very naive, uh, broad data science questions um, about stuff that he or she might know just from, from reading the press, or managers also tend to ask actual business questions, also sometimes naively, but they, it's likely that you will be asked to, to solve their actual business problem at this company, and I think this is great. I think uh, this is uh, one case where the most interesting questions I was asked were, were asked by, by in, in this group, not by people trying to test my knowledge of deep knowledge of statistics, but by people who with an actual problem to solve. And uh, people in a higher position in a company are, are more inclined to, to think about these things as opposed to technical details like engineers or, or just uh, rank and file data science. Finally, there's, there's uh, math and brain teasers, uh, and no one asks these questions. No one, uh, no one cares about math, and I have come to London two years ago, and I haven't met a single person who would care about math, and this is including multiple math PhDs. I'm, I'm very disappointed with this city. <laughs> Okay. Statistics, what is it good for? A uh, couple of weeks ago, I had a, a heated argument with, uh, with a colleague about R squared as a measure of model fit. Uh, he insisted that R squared can only be used for linear models and it doesn't make sense for non-linears because it implicitly assumes uh, linearity and I told him that it's it's crazy talk. R squared is just a number, and it's it's derived from 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 mean squared error, and you can you can calculate the number for any kind of model you want because it only depends on on the errors. So yes, this is what strong knowledge of statistics is good for: winning arguments about statistics. I mean, obviously. It is nice to know the difference between a mean and a median, and it's good to understand that if you measure stuff, you will sometimes get results that are uh, influenced by randomness, and, and maybe there are some tests that you can take that will tell you whether you're fooling yourself or whether the, the results are, are reflect some, some actual truth as opposed to not. But these things, everyone should know this, not just data scientists. Everyone who, who reads a newspaper should know these things, just the same way as everyone should uh, know how to read and write. But it doesn't mean I would, I would list reading and writing as a necessary skill for a data scientist. I think data scientists are, are paying lip service to statistics less because it's so relevant on the job and more because at some point, statisticians invented the term data science to rebrand, to give themselves a new name, and then the, the area drifted into many different directions, but we are still stuck with the, with the definitions that, uh, that someone invented in the 90s. Okay, so... Here are the, the typical questions uh, about statistics that you can get in an interview. Is there any difference between expected value and mean? This, is a, this, this, this might be the, the worst question that I have ever had. It's terrible. This is it's purely knowledge-based. It's literally just asking you whether you know the definitions of things, whether you know, know the names. By the way, yes, it, it's kind of the same thing, but People call it different names in different contexts. What, what is a p-value? Okay, this is slightly better. It's still just a knowledge-based definition question. Um, it seems seems less, less terrible because the p-value is a super basic concept, and it, it will be hard to imagine that someone doesn't know what a p-value is after reading anything about statistics. 
but still this is just what it is. This is a question about memorization. What is a t-test? Again, if you have done any statistics, any point in your life, you, you should probably have some associations about this. But this is, it is what it is. These are the typical questions. And um, most companies, in most companies, you, you won't be interviewing with, a, with someone with a degree in statistics. And this is about the, about the level of statistical knowledge that a typical engineer, after completing an intro to statistics, will have. And this is exactly what they will ask you. More rarely, sometimes, if you're interviewing, again, this is the type of thing that maybe Facebook would ask, or, or if you're in, your interviewer has a degree in statistics, or at least math, it is more likely that they will ask you an actual problem to solve, like a high school math problem, like this one. There is one box has 12 black and 12 red cards. Second box has 24 black and 24 red. If you want to draw two cards at random from one of the two boxes, which box has the higher probability of getting the same color? This is actually not a terrible question because you can, you can solve it in your head. You, you can, can give an answer without, uh, without writing any equations. And I, I would appreciate if I was asked this type of questions more often, but it, doesn't happen very often. And second one, one percent of women who participate in a routine mammography test have breast cancer. Eighty percent of women who have breast cancer will get positive mammographies, but 9.6 percent of women who don't have breast cancer will also get positive mammographies. A woman of this age had a positive mammography in a routine screening. What is the probability that she actually has breast cancer? So what is the probability of actually having cancer conditioned on getting a positive test result? Again, this is, this is not hard. This is, this is actually the type of thing that I think everyone should know, just to understand the, the results of medical tests they're getting, and especially doctors. By the way, doctors don't... Uh, I think two thirds of doctors uh, failed this on this question. This is not neither the time nor the place to explain to you about the uh, base theorem, but all I want to add is if you want to prepare for this type of questions, and you don't have to because most companies are not going to ask you this, but some of them will. If you are going to prepare for this at all, I recommend mm, trying to understand probability and these simple problems on an intuitive level without having to write, write equations and write formulas because if your level of understanding is such that you have to write a formula and then try to substitute stuff into it, I guarantee that in an, in an actual in interview you will get nervous and you will mess it up. Okay, so uh, how do we prepare? First line of defense, uh, watch intro to statistics. You need to, to solve these questions. Uh, one second, I one second. Um, I think we want to start again just on this page. How do we prepare? Okay. Okay, so how do we prepare? How do we prepare for these types of questions? Uh, I would start with watching Intro to Statistics course on, on Coursera. This is, this is probably the, the highest level of statistics education that your interviewer will have. So this should be enough. An intro course will, will have everything you, in principle, need to know to, to solve these questions. And concentrate on, on learning the lingo. If it's probably more cost effective for you to just Memorize all the basic terms uh, in, in statistics in a, in a statistics textbook, then actually try to understand the problems. I know this sounds wrong, but this is what it is. This is, this is how you crack the interview. 
firm opinion on, on Bayesian statistics. This is weirdly enough. Uh, I've been asked my opinion on this on, on multiple occasions. And this should be enough to, to get you, for you to solve the, the knowledge-based questions. And, and if, you, if you want to get good at the problem solving, the, the math type questions, there are also resources for that. Uh, I would, again, I would start with just homework problems from, from a statistics course. And the more interesting probability questions, uh, you won't find them in, in typical intro to statistics. But there's another uh, another group of people who who get these questions a lot. Who uh, traders? I have, in addition to all my data science interviewing, I have flirted with quantitative trading and also actuarial science. And uh, I I recommend all of these books, at least the chapters on probability. Uh, this one in particular, very famous book uh, in, uh, in finance. And if you, if you solve the problems, the probability problems in these books, and all of them have, have solutions, not like the, the other 120 questions. If you solve the probability problems in these books, there is no way, no one will ever surprise you in a, with a probability question in a data science interview. They are much more, much more than, you, than you need to know. Okay, after statistics, uh, the other big area, machine learning and natural language processing. Typical questions are, can you explain the difference between a test set and the validation set? Purely knowledge based. What is overfitting and how do you deal with it? Okay, this is again something that anyone who has watched an intro to machine learning will know. What is a random forest? No surprise there. Mm, this is this is about the, the level of machine learning that you need to know for most companies, and this is fair. Why? Why this is uh, this is understandable that they wouldn't ask you to implement a random forest, or they wouldn't ask you very very deep details of uh, support vector machines or anything like that, because after all, you. They are not going to hire you to, to have you do research in machine learning. They, if they hire you at all, they will hire you to, to solve their problems. And it's very rare occasion that you have to invent new things to, to solve the problem. Most of the time, you just grab the tool from, from the shelf and, and just do it. And it's the same way as, uh, as in, in software engineering. No one one expects you to invent a new way of, of, of sorting an array that would be crazy. The, the algorithms are already there and you should be aware you should, you should be aware of their existence and uh, what each one is good for and, and apply them appropriately. So uh, to prepare for, for, for the interviews I Again, I, I recommend uh, online courses. and Unix uh, machine learning course on Coursera is great. I, everyone who has seen it says it's great. I say it's great. I think you should watch it. Uh, again, familiarize yourself with, with, with the lingo. It's, if you know the difference between a Ridge regression and Tikhonov regularization, which are the same thing, that's mm, an easy way. Uh, be able to talk about the top 10 machine learning algorithms for 10, 2 minutes each. Yeah, that's, that's 20 minutes of talking, how hard can it be to memorize 20 minutes? And basically what it uh, says about the algorithm in, in the top two paragraphs on Wikipedia, on Wikipedia page about random forest, and on Wikipedia page about linear regression, this is this is enough. Uh, this is this is more than you than you will ever need to know in a, in an interview. Obviously, there are exceptions. If you're interviewing with uh, DeepMind or you're interviewing with OpenAI, they will actually ask you obscure stuff from papers. But if you're interviewing with them, then you don't need to be listening to my talk. By the way, if you 
if they hire you, you can uh, you can refer me. And uh, finally, I I recommend running some examples, like examples from from Scikit-Learn or from examples uh, examples for, of machine learning algorithms in R and Caled. That's if you this will having uh, having actually used an algorithm on actual data will give you, give you more credibility when you talk about it. Doesn't mean you have to do a lot with it, but um, believe me, having used it even once uh, make a difference in uh, how uh, in how realistic you sound talking about it. And uh, this being done, if you if you if you want to prepare even better, uh, an advanced thing topic would be uh, to derive linear regression. I this is this is the only. This is the only machine learning algorithm that someone ever asked me to derive on paper, and this happened uh, on three separate occasions. So maybe maybe know how to derive linear regression. And except for for one Silicon Valley company, no one has ever asked me to implement a an algorithm, machine learning algorithm in an interview. And this was an interview for a machine learning engineer. So yeah, but it was no surprise that they would ask that. But other than that, no one essentially, no one ever asks to to implement any machine learning algorithms. So maybe yeah, don't waste time on it. Uh, and finally, reading blocks, uh, data science blocks, machine learning blocks, or Kaggle forums. This will provide you with plenty of, uh, of examples of, of new algorithms to name drop. Mm, maybe even uh, doing some, some Kaggle competitions, but the point is not to, to, to get to 99.9 .9 accuracy on whatever data set. The point is to be aware of the field, uh, have, have a vague understanding of what people are doing nowadays. So if you if someone, it, it, it is likely that your interviewer will be reading these things too. So if they ask you about uh, word to vec or something like that, you they, they won't take you by surprise. And finally, if uh, you really can help with maybe you can actually do some machine learning, like, like doing Kaggle, but uh, it is sadly this is really not necessary to ace an interview. Big Data Borat says in data science, 80% of time spent prepared data, 20% of time spent complaining about need for prepared data. Yeah, I, I, I love Big Data Borat, especially since I can uh, I can pull off Borat accent without even trying. Okay. Uh, another mm, group of questions, tech questions, uh, computer science and tech questions. I I put them the, both categories in the uh, in the the same bracket. What is yield in Python? This is a pretty bad question again. Purely knowledge based. Yield is an Relatively obscure construct in Python, and it, it takes. If you if you don't know what it is, it will take you five minutes to, to Google and, and learn it. So, why do they even ask this? Which Hadoop vendor is your company using? Right, this is. I obviously this was asked. Uh, I, I was asked this by by an engineer. No one else in the engineer would be interested in, in knowing that. Why why? Why is that even interesting? Why do they even? This is this is, it's kind of blows my mind. I think this this my my this question might take the lead as uh, the race for the, the worst question I have ever had. What are the different types of joints in SQL? Again, with the standard verb, you you need to know SQL. So, uh, what is yield in Python? Why do they even ask this? I, I said 
multiple times already that these questions are stupid, and I, I think they are, they are pretty stupid, but I didn't say they're useless. I don't think they are useless. I think they may, may actually be rather useful in, uh, in differenti differentiating candidates. So how, how is knowing uh, what yield in Python is useful? How is it making you a better scientist, the data scientist, that you know uh, what is yield in Python? The answer is obviously it doesn't. It doesn't make you a better data scientist, but this is the wrong question to ask. The question is not whether knowing this is making you a better data scientist. The question is, are the people who happen to know this better data scientists? And it's, it's a subtle distinction, but it's there. It's like, uh, why do companies uh, look for candidates with degrees from Oxford, Cambridge, and Imperial? Or, or Ivy League universities in, in the United States. Not be, and as, especially, uh, why do they even do that if they they are not specifically looking for a, for any kind of specific degree in, from those universities? They are happy hiring a chemistry PhD from Imperial, same way as they are happy to hire an astrophysicist from Cambridge to do data science. And, you could argue that these things are slightly related to data science, but maybe maybe astrophysics more than chemistry, but that's not the point. The point is not that a chemistry PhD in, uh, from Cambridge has learned in his uh, doing his degree something that a chemistry PhD from some lesser university in some obscure country has, has learned in doing his degree. This is absolutely not the point. The point is, the, the, per, the kind of person who gets a chemistry PhD from Imperial is probably intelligent, probably hardworking, and conformist. And these are the three qualities that make an excellent employee. So people get the, the fancy degrees, and this way they, they signal for, to employers the qualities of, of themselves. And this is, this is not, not that the getting the degree makes them a better person, it's that getting the degree is a proof that they have already had those qualities. And one, one wishes that you could maybe find a less wasteful and convoluted way to test if someone is intelligent and hardworking, but IQ tests are passe, so this is, this is where we stand. And it's the same way with, with yield in Python. It's not that knowing yield in Python necessarily helps you be a better data scientist. It's that people who happen already to know about yield in Python probably have spent a fair amount of time doing Python because this is not something that, that, that typically features in an intro in a, in a complete introduction to Python. So someone who, who knows what they what yield is must have spent some time programming in Python, and this is good. In the same way as someone who knows who, who the Hadoop vendor is, the company they, they're at, this, this person probably has done some, done some stuff with Hadoop. And by which I mean, this is the type of person who, are, who is interested in the technology, who is interested in, in Hadoop perhaps even more than just as a tool. And this is the type of person who will know how to set up their own cluster, and this is the type of person who will not need their, their hand held by, by experiencing the needs. So, uh, by knowing this, this kind of stuff, you, you're signaling that you, you're, you're a person who is interested in technology and will will be independent and will will be able to, to get started quickly and will not just be an analyst who only can can sit and and make reports in Excel. Either that or you're signaling that you have uh, listened to my talk and uh, and memorized these things. Another uh, another batch of questions in, uh, in tech 
in uh, the category of uh, computer science and technology, uh, the actual computer science. And these are questions that can be taken straight from, from, from software engineering interviews. Like, find the minimum element in a rotated sorted array in linear time complexity. Or, reverse a linked list in, uh, in linear time using constant space. Or, write a function that returns the nth Fibonacci number. And by this, we probably mean uh, an efficient function, not the naive uh, exponential implementation. So these questions are the standard fair. This is a, um, you know, the, the, these are the exact questions uh, tech companies ask uh, software engineers. And by tech companies, I mean probably um, big tech companies, the Facebooks and the Googles more than, than, than uh, the London startups. And it's rather rather unusual that uh, you will be asked this question, this type of question. But if you if if you're interviewing for a for a slightly more engineering oriented position, uh, it uh, it might happen. And I don't know. I just I like them, and uh, I I recommend that you learn about them. Uh, these things might be slightly useful on the job, but maybe more importantly, if you if you're just getting started and you you're deciding whether to go towards more analytics and pure research data science or more more the engineering kind, I highly recommend uh, doing engineering because because you can it's it's easy for an engineer to to not do engineering and think about probabilities instead and that it, it is it is really hard if you if you're just in a if you're, if you're an analyst if you're the kind of data scientist who only works with r or matlab or something like this it will be very hard for you to to go the, the other direction i have in, in my experience every every additional bit of of engineering uh, experience that I have makes my life easier doing data science and, and opens new possibilities, opens new opportunities for me. It's uh, at least this is, this is a point of view of someone who was first good at maths and, uh, and started learning um, computer science later. Maybe it, it, perhaps it's perhaps it's the opposite for someone who, who comes from a computer science background, but. Every additional level of uh, computer science full will, will will greatly increase your opportunities. So I wouldn't neglect uh, these things, even though they they are less less commonly encountered in data science interviews than just statistics and machine learning. Okay, so how how do you uh, prepare for these questions? Uh, I will start with learning SQL. This is assuming you, 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 you're kind of familiar with programming in any programming language, SQL will take you a weekend or two, and this is, this is the one thing that you will be asked. Um, whether you, you really want to be an analyst, or a machine learning engineer, or something in between, um, SQL, everyone is using SQL, and you, you should just know it. Especially the Especially the trivia bits like the differences between joints and um, between union and union all. These are super common questions and it's really worth your effort to, to, to memorize these things. There's not, not that many of them. So, SQL is a must. Uh, and whatever programming language you, you're using, if you're interviewing for a position in programming with Python or R, you can make a very good impression by just googling the typical questions about your programming language. So if you if you go and Google Python interview questions, you will get the, the question about the yield somewhere near the top, and it's uh, just finding out what what yield is and how inheritance works in Python. It's 
It's a really cheap way to, to score some points. And finally, uh, do some data manipulation in, in your programming language of choice. Uh, not all interviews, um, less than a half in my experience, will require to do, you to do any coding uh, during an interview, which is, I think it's a mistake that they, they don't do it more often, but that's the way it is. But the ones that do will typically this will typically be limited to, to doing some kind of data manipulation. But this is actually the kind of thing that you, you will be doing on the job. So it makes sense, uh, even if you're not preparing specifically for interviews, to just load up some CSVs in Python or R and, and do stuff to them. And for advanced topics, for the, for the programming questions, the Fibonacci and the sorted arrays and the linked list and stuff, uh, all, this, all these things are super standard uh, programming questions from tech interviews. So there's many great awesome books about them, much more than, than in data science and better books and with more examples. Obviously, the, the, the classic. Uh, highly recommended cracking the coding interview. Elements of programming interviews also a good one. Even more questions. And uh, if you if you if you read the, these these books, I I recommend just doing the the easy problems. Don't waste your time trying to do the the hard ones unless you like this. Uh, if you just do the easy problems, this should be enough to you'll be overqualified for 95% of data science jobs. And uh, also, th there, are, mm, there are those places on, on the internet like LeetCode, I like LeetCode, or uh, Sphere Online, and, and a couple of others. There are online uh, judges for where, where you can practice your, your, prob your problem solving. They have problems that are taken straight out of these books or from interviews. You can type up your, your solution, click a button, and see see if it runs. Uh, I highly recommend them. Mm, they're super fun. Mm, but again, this is this is super fun, but only for the mm, for the rare interview that will actually go in, into this depth. So if you if, if if this is not your cup of tea, then maybe maybe don't waste your time on it unless you want to also be a competent uh, software engineer in addition to being a competent data scientist. And uh, finally, okay, and obviously, do the easy. Which is more important, good data or good analysis? How would you turn unstructured data into structured data? Is it really necessary? Explain the terms, case of dimensionality, 80-20 rule, KPI. So these are typical, mm. what I call, general data science questions. They are not problem solving, they are, are not very deep, but they, they test your general data science knowledge. I, I guess what they test is that you, you haven't decided that you, you're going to do data science yesterday. This, if you, if you have been doing data science, or if you've been reading, at least reading about data science for some time, you're going to know these things. So mm, this, is, this is what they test. They, they don't test whether you're smart. They don't test whether you, you can do any specific thing. They just test that you, you're interested, and that's fair. It's, clearly, it's, it's better to, to, to hire someone who who likes and uh, is interested in this stuff than, than otherwise. 